Hi, my name is Faith Linton, and I will be sharing with you the research I did on ash trees. So, just some background real quick. The ash tree is one recent victim of invasive species in North America. The emerald ash borer is a beetle from Southeast Asia, which was first found in the United States about 20 years ago. Its sole host plant is the ash tree, and because of that, it has completely wiped out entire populations of ash trees in North America. Now, in Southeast Asia, there are different species of ash tree, which are classified as tolerant, which means that they are able to coexist with the emerald ash borer because they have more defense mechanisms to reduce the herbivory. These, all the species in North America, however, are susceptible, which means that they have not been able to develop defense mechanisms to coexist and therefore they will die when they are infested by an emerald ash borer population. So as a result, the emerald ash borer has completely wiped out entire populations of North American species of ash tree. Now, one interesting thing to note is that Unlike chestnut blight, which completely wiped out all the American chestnuts, um, the ash trees, there are certain individual ash trees which do somehow survive uh, emerald ash borer infestation. These are called lingering ash trees. Now, it's not known exactly what traits confer this increased tolerance to the ash borer. Um, so that's what I wanted to look into. So we know that the species of tolerant ash trees in Southeast Asia have a greater concentration and variety of foliar phytochemicals, which are often thought to contribute to defense against insects. Um, and so I wanted to test to see if perhaps the lingering ash trees in North America might have a greater concentration or variety of foliar phytochemicals. I chose to focus on one foliar phytochemical specifically, which is the phenolic compounds. Um, caffeic acid is an example of that, which is caffeine. Um, and I just wanted to look and see if perhaps the lingering ash trees had a greater concentration of phenolic compounds than, than the um, more susceptible ash trees. So I collected samples, um, extracted phenolic compounds, I quantified the exact um, health of the tree in order to rate whether or not a tree was lingering or susceptible because there's certain live trees that are actively dying and so those I would not classify as lingering ash. So for my results I found no significant difference between phenolic concentration of lingering and susceptible ash trees. However, I did find that even though it's not significant, you can see here the susceptible ash trees actually as a trend show higher concentration of phenolic compounds than the lingering ash trees, which is interesting, not what I was expecting. That could be because phenolic compounds are an induced response, meaning that they are released in response to being attacked. So trees that are less likely to be attacked might have a lower concentration. That's just one idea to explain that. Um, you can also see I ran a test uh, per site as well. I sampled from three different forests with three different edaphic conditions and I just wanted to make sure that those edaphic conditions didn't affect the concentration of phenolic compounds produced and as you can see they actually did between two of the sites, Hayden and McElroy. And so I ran through and ran the statistical analyses again um, on trees per site just to account for that as a variable. And um, just some discussion, implications, um, I think it'd be great to look into rather than just the concentration of phenolic compounds, the variety of compounds present. Um, I did not measure for that. I would also test other foliar phytochemicals such as flavonoids which are known to be defense mechanisms in trees.